Hello everyone, today we will be talking about abortion and why so many Christians seem to be confused and deceived by many of the talking points that come out of this discussion, especially from the Democratic Party. And today I am joined with an expert on the topic, my wife. Uh, I tried talking about this by myself, but I realized I don't have any of the technical knowledge or technical words that my wife does. <laughs> Uh, so that is why I decided to have her on, and she gladly stepped up to the plate as she is currently uh, feeding our third-born son to talk about this wonderful <laughs> topic of abortion. Very emotional topic, but she will uh, do quite well, I'm sure. Wow, well, thanks. I uh, I feel like, oh, technical language. I said one one word ectopic pregnancy and all of a sudden I'm an expert and uh, I hope I can live up to to that I'm definitely not an expert but I know I, I mean I do know more than you do because I'm mildly obsessed with the topic mildly is an understatement <laughs> yeah so basically what we hear from so many Christians who seem to think that it is wrong for the government to ban abortion, um, even though they may not personally agree with uh, abortion themselves, is is they will use some of these uh, talking points that generally, like I said, come out of the, the Democratic Party. And those talking points are abortion needs to be legal because what about cases of rape or incest or what about... Uh, pregnancies that could cause harm to the mother? What about these types of situations? Um, how do we as Christians navigate these difficult situations? If they do exist and they are truly problematic, does that mean that all abortion should be legal? Because this is ultimately the, the step that these people are going to make. If you as a Christian say abortion is wrong, always wrong, the first thing that you are going to hear is, well, what about rape and incest? Like, every, oh, like it's, it's like a robot. It's quite fascinating, actually, how quickly this comes out. So we, as Christians, we have to prepare for this, right? Because this is the first objection that you're going to hear. And we need to analyze this objection. Because generally, the person you're talking to, they want abortion always to be legal. So what they're going to do is they're going to take these exception cases and they're going to say, because these exist, therefore, all abortion should be legal. But this is not a logically coherent argument. That would be like saying that because some people murder others with spoons, that we need to ban all spoons. Like, this is just not how this works, right? So that's just the first thing that I want to cover, but we're going to go into each one of these topics and talk about them because all of them are very emotionally charged. And most people will come up with some crazy hypothetical to prove a point when in reality, we could just use reality to dictate what we think rather than hypothetical. So let's talk about some real things, some real examples. So let's start off with everyone's favorite objection, which is rape. What if a woman is raped? And they'll always come up with, what if like an 11-year-old is raped and she's raped and she gets pregnant from this uh, crime? What is she allowed to do? And of course, this is a very emotionally charged argument. Like, of course it is. And it should be. This is horrible. This would be a horrible thing to happen to someone. So yes, it is very logical in a way to be emotional about this, yeah. right? So we have to decide, what is the argument that they're making here? If a young girl is raped, what do we do with the baby that is created in this situation? And what they are going to argue is that you should kill the baby. That is what they're going to say. And we have to think about this. Should we be killing the innocent party in a crime? That's the question. So what do you think, Tati? What do you think? Well, obviously, no. Um, abortion is always 100% of the time wrong, even in cases of rape, even even something as horrible as that, which is always, yeah, I mean, that's always what people say. Um, and I don't know, do you want me to go into, like, what I, how I would respond? Or... Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) yeah. I mean, I would say the exact same thing that, that, you know, that would be horrible. It really would be horrible. But killing the baby is wrong. And then since people are so concerned with this, you know, hypothetical 11 year old child, um, you can even appeal to that even more. You know, she's just gone through this horrible trauma. Should we then put her through the trauma of killing a baby inside of her? Should we add a trauma to her trauma? Because they'll say, oh, giving birth, having a baby, becoming a mom, that's a trauma. That's something horrible that's, that's happened to you. It wasn't your choice. It's like, no, that's not your, that's not your choice. There are a lot of things that aren't our choice. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing. But there is this, this life that comes from it there is something good that comes from it and I mean it is horrible there's no getting around that but adding another evil on top of it and it would be evil for the now mother as well to kill her own child inside of her like this is just would be extremely traumatic and then if you do know anything about it you can start going into how abortion is like medically really dangerous and it increases your risk of breast cancer in the future you you're with one abortion before you're 40 you have a 50 percent higher chance of getting breast cancer so should we now put her through all of these extra traumas because someone did something horrible to her like if we're talking about even just the 11 year old girl and not the baby themselves, who we can't leave out of the equation, obviously. Like, if this is the appeal that's being made to you, well, you can appeal right back um, on her behalf in terms of not killing a baby inside of her. That would be good. Right. And ultimately, what these people are saying is, is we need to kill the baby. Like, that is what they are saying. That's the whole point of bringing up the argument. Um, And what they are basically saying is, is punish the innocent party. You take the victim and you kill the victim. It just is not logically coherent, right? If you are the victim of a crime, we don't punish you, right? That's just not how this works. And this argument, of course, has a lot of emotional appeal. But when you actually think about it, logically speaking, we do not punish the sons for the father's actions. We do not punish the children for the sins of their father. That's how the the Bible teaches this very clearly. And if that's true, then taking the innocent child who is innocent of their father's sins and killing them and punishing them, this is not right. And generally speaking, in this country, we don't kill rapists. We we don't. It's just not how we punish them. Uh, we only put them in prison for a very short amount of time nowadays. <laughs> it's like insane. Yeah, right? I mean, we, we barely punish them anymore, but we're going to kill the innocent party. Right? It just is. This is not right. This is not right. And this goes also for incest, right? There are a lot of complications that can come from an incest, incestuous relationship. No one will deny that. But does that mean that you have to kill the baby? Just because it's going to have a horrible life, right? This is what, what these people say. say all the time. Oh, uh, if the mother doesn't love the baby, it's going to have a horrible life. Oh, it's going to have all of these genetic disorders and it's going to have a horrible life. But that's not how we value life. Quality of life doesn't determine how much value is in the life itself. Having a difficult life doesn't make your life less valuable than someone who has a wonderful life. That's just not how life is valued. And I I personally know a woman, I worked with her, who was raped by her uncle when she was 11 and was given the option by her mother to abort the baby that, you know, she was given in this horrible thing that happened to her and she chose not to 11 years old raped incestuous rape and she chose to keep the baby and by the time i met her her daughter was like 12 years old and when you see pictures of them together they look like sisters that's how close in age they are and if i ask her like oh like what were you thinking in all of this? Like, what, how did you make this decision and everything? She's like, it's like oh, I would have never have chosen another thing. I, I love my daughter. Like, why, why are we just assuming, why are we just assuming that this child is, is going to have this horrible, miserable life just because it's an incest rape baby? That's just not right. That is not correct. 
there are multiple testimonies of things like this happening where people have come out of it, have come out of these terrible situations and didn't have some horrible life that somehow makes their life less valuable. That's just not right. That's not a right argument. And how dehumanizing is it that 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 is all that the other side sees? Oh, you were conceived this way. Therefore, your life has no value. You were conceived in a way I don't like. So your your life doesn't have value. And Oh, but but we can make babies in Petri dishes and then artificially inseminate them into into surrogates like they're cows. And and that that's humane. Yeah. And then then there's the final argument that they will generally throw. And that is, what about if the woman's life is in danger due to this pregnancy? What do we do then? And this is where Tati has all of her fancy words, so I'm going (laughs) to let her use them. And (laughs) generally, I would say pretty much like, I don't know, like personally, I don't know how often this happens. How often is a pregnancy actually threatening to the mother's health? Because generally speaking, I would say that pregnancies don't do that, right? What do you, what do you think, Tati? I mean, they don't. <laughs> they don't, right? We just we just had three. They were not threatening my life. Um, no, I don't want to. No, it really doesn't happen very often at all. Um, the yeah, my fancy word was ectopic pregnancy, right? People they always say, "Oh, ectopic pregnancy." Okay, that's when the embryo. All right, the all yes, the already human being implants in the fallopian tube instead of the uterus. That is life threatening to the mother, and that baby is one hundred percent going to die. It's not in its home. It's not in its uterus. Um, the uterus was created for the baby, not for the woman. Just saying. Um, but yeah, so they have to remove that baby. That is like the only time. Um, and then yeah, when we were talking about this last night, I was like, you know, Josh, like, what is, you know, God forbid the pregnancy is threatening the life of the mother or if the mother finds out that she has cancer right she's she's 26 weeks pregnant she found out she has cancer they want to start radiation but they can't radiate with the baby inside of her right oh we have to abort We, we have to kill the baby okay what what natural and right way is there to get a baby out of a woman deliver the baby you can deliver a live baby um, you know, it, it's a horrible circumstance. The baby may not survive, but at least we're being pro-life in that we're not just killing the baby. Like there is another way to get a baby out of a mother and that's the natural way of delivering them. And that's way safer for the mother too, because there are botched abortions all the time. I mean, you are sticking something up into the uterus. You're mangling a human body inside. There are, they leave parts behind. They get infected. Like there are so many dangers that come and rightfully so that come with killing a baby in the womb and then scraping it out. I mean, the whole thing is just barbaric beyond belief. But it's also, it's, if her life is already in danger, delivering a live baby is a million times more safe and ethical than, a, than killing it. I have spoken to someone when we were evangelizing. I spoke to a woman who, she told me that she had been raped uh, a year and a year prior. Yeah, that she had been raped and that she was pregnant and that she had aborted the baby. And she, you know, wasn't really in the faith because of this. And because I guess maybe people had known, like, I don't know, she was not really a fan of how, like, her Catholic family had spoken to her, you know, all of these things. Um, And I'm standing there listening to this, like, first of all, why why are you telling me all of this? Um, I don't even know you. Maybe that's why. But anyway, um... Uh, you know, just thinking, what do I say? What do I say? Because I can't sit there and say, yeah, you know, you're, you're fine. Like something horrible happened to you. I, you know, I get it. And, you know, I just told her like, look, I don't know what to say to you. Like what happened to you is absolutely horrible. Um, but I told her, I was like, but, but you need to repent. Like you will not have peace before you admit what, what you did. I was like, that was a baby 
you know, and I spoke to her very gently. I can't remember exactly what I said. This was a while ago. And she thanked me for the way that I spoke to her. And I still was able to tell her the truth. Like there's a way to do this. There's a way to stand up for the truth that is not harsh, that is loving, um, and that takes the individual into consideration. But that's when we're speaking to an individual. When we're speaking just corporately in terms of of sin and what is right and what is wrong, we don't need all of these qualifications. We just need to say abortion is wrong always. It's always wrong. If you're not speaking to this person who has literally had this horrible thing happen to them, then there's no reason to be pandering to everyone trying to look like the nice guy there's just no reason because god's gonna judge us for that and ultimately you're responsible for the evil as well if you see people killing babies and you're making excuses for them you're just as responsible that's what the bible says so there's just no reason to fold there's no reason to fold for these emotional arguments god isn't swayed by these emotional arguments he doesn't change like shifting shadows he's a firm foundation and is killing babies wrong? The answer is always yes. It's always yes. And that's just the end of it. So ultimately what's behind all of these objections is really just this innate desire from these people to kill their own children. They like this. They want this. They vote for this. This is what they really want, and they are going to use all of these other things to get what they want. And you as a Christian, you can't let them get away with it. You can't let them use these niche, small, minuscule fractions of percentages of abortions that happen. You can't let them use these as their ammo to justify 60 million dead babies. You can't. If 100,000 of 60 million babies were rape babies that were aborted, that's still, like, even if you want to give them that as viable, this still does not justify the 60 million that have been killed in this country. So this is why we're talking about this, to show you guys and to equip you guys how to combat this demonic influence because it really is demonic it is so deceiving so many have been deceived and i'm just sick of hearing it from christians i am sick to death of it because it is just clearly a lie from satan that people are buying so many christians are buying this oh an unwanted baby is is better off dead oh a rape baby is better off dead They, they just that's what they're saying without saying it right that is just that is just demonic. That's all there is to say about it. This whole this whole argument is just demonic influence. And Christians, we just cannot allow this to go on. We need to speak out against it. We need to stand firm on the truth of God's word that murdering children, sacrificing them to Moloch is not good. And if we let it keep going on, it will be the downfall of our country. That's kind of that's funny. I was going to be like... Um, some like let's just say like someone murder like a couple people murder people with spoons every year so we should ban all spoons but that's what the uk did with knives 